Welcome to another week and another episode of Crew Equip. <laughs> now, I don't know if you're viewing us right now in the morning, the afternoon, or night, but whatever you're viewing us at, good one to you. Here's the deal. This month, we are focused on the Word of God, knowing and using and understanding your scripture, the Bible. And so last week, we discussed why we needed to study the Bible anyway. I don't know about you guys, but me personally, growing up, I was not very interested in a book as thick and as intimidating as the Bible. And so it took me a long time to get to a place where I could actually even get in there. But I wish I knew what I knew now when I, was, when I felt that way or somebody was there to speak to us on that level. So I'm glad that we're able to be that for you. This week, we will be discussing how the Bible is not boring. Right. I know. I, I, I hear you already. <laughs> I hear you already. Look, hear me out. But better yet, hear uh, Minister Akisha out as she uh, explains to us how the Bible is not boring, but it is life itself. Yes. Take it away. Minister Keisha. All right, so thank you. So, yes, you heard it right. The Bible is not boring. I know it looks like a long dissertation that's going to woo you to sleep. And sometimes you may even open your Bible right before bed and you find yourself waking up and your face is planted on the page. But I want to show you today how exciting the Bible really is, okay? So last week we talked about why we should study the Bible in the first place. It is the foundation of this Christian faith. And if you proclaim to be a Christian, then this is the Bible, this is the book that you should know. This is the book that you should desire to study because it's God himself, he is his word. So how can it not be exciting? It's God. Well, I know you're thinking that, you know, the word boring doesn't necessarily fully explain it. You may say, I'm not that interested. However, I would challenge you today to go on a journey with me as we look at the different genres that are present in the Bible. The first one is the Bible can be funny. It really can be. There are some really funny stories in the Bible. I know that may surprise you, but there really are. So, Numbers chapter 22, verses 23 through 31, there was this crazy prophet, false prophet, by the name of Balaam. Not a cool dude. He was pretty crazy. And the Lord was trying to stop him from going somewhere that he didn't want him to go. So God sent an angel to stop him in the road. Balaam was riding a donkey, all right? That's how he was getting to where he wanted to go. And in the process, the donkey saw the angel, but Balaam didn't. So the donkey started going crazy and wild, and he flipped Balaam off, off of himself, and, 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 the, and the donkey started stumping and going crazy, um, even uh, on Balaam. And Balaam got angry with the donkey, and he started beating him. He was like, what's wrong with you? You are crazy. What is going on? And in that moment, in that moment, we had a whole Shrek moment because the donkey started talking. I think, honestly, that's where they got the inspiration for the movie from. So when the donkey started talking, the donkey was like, why are you doing this to me? What is wrong with you? I see an angel. You don't. I'm just trying to help you out. I personally think that if a donkey started talking to me, that I would be cracking up. Well, first I would be scared. But the fact that Balaam like, started beating the donkey and then, and then the donkey started like, talking to him took me all the way out. So the Bible itself has, can be funny, but you have to be able and ready and eager 
to actually unpack the stories that are in the Bible. Towards the end of the story, you can read it yourself. As a matter of fact, I challenge you to do so. But you'll find out that Balaam's eyes were open and he was able to see the angel too. But it was after the donkey went crazy on him. All right. So the next genre, the Bible has love stories in it. For all those people that love a good love story, you know, those sappy love stories, you can watch, go to the movie and watch The Notebook or whatever. The Bible has those kind of stories in it too. It's not boring. I'm going to prove it to you. Ruth, chapter 4. So many of you may have heard the story already, but Ruth um, was a widow, and, you know, she stayed with her mother-in-law. And by staying with her mother-in-law, she didn't go back after her husband died and, um, you know, go back to her, her hometown. She stayed, and she honored her mother-in-law. She took care of her. And then she was like, hey, go out. I need you to go out, and I need you to pick up, you know, some food for us. Go out to the field, check it out, get some food. In the process, somebody was eyeing her. His name was Boaz. Boaz saw her from afar off and was like, don't bother her. Let her do what she got to do. He was watching her. He sure was. And after that, her mother-in-law told her, I'm going to tell you how to make sure that he really notices you. While he is sleeping, go and sleep at his feet. So guess what? She did that. And he woke up, and he was like, wait a minute. I've been watching her, and she is now sleeping at my feet. So he did everything that he was supposed to do to get her. I mean everything. He technically wasn't even supposed to be able to marry her, but... He did everything he was supposed to do. He went to the person that was next in line to marry her based off of the rules and regulations. And he did all the, because he really found, he really found something about her that was special. And you know how the story ends. They lived happily ever after. <laughs> and guess what? The Bible is not boring. It even has action stories in it. Here's an action story for you. Judges, Judges, chapter 7 and 8. This story is about Gideon. Now, sure, I could have picked any story in the Bible to talk about in regards to action because it's full of a lot of action. I personally feel like the Bible can be any movie, your favorite movie channel or your favorite movie genre, it is in the Bible. So the action movie, let's talk about Gideon. So Gideon... His name itself means the destroyer. So he was expected to be this warrior. Kind of reminds you of a scene out of, you know, Black Panther or um, any of the other action movies where they're going to war and you see them charging forward. Yeah, those kind of movies. Well, Gideon had a huge army, and they weren't able to defeat their enemies at first. As a matter of fact, it was 32,000 of them, of the men. 32,000, and God told Gideon, guess what? You got too many men. That's why you're not going to win. So what did Gideon do? He was like, hey, if any of, our, any of you guys are scared to go to battle, you can peace out. You can leave. 22,000 men was like, I ain't signed up for this kind of battle. I'm out. And they left. So he was left with 10,000 men. And even that was not enough. God was like, wait a minute, there's still too many men. You need to get rid of more. And so Gideon was able to get his army down to 300. How do you go from 32,000 men to 300? Most of us think that in a battle, you need more people, not less, but God always has a plan. So this is how awesome this action scene was. Gideon had a plan, right? So his plan was to make sure that everybody that was the 300 that were remaining, he told them to get some clay pots and they were going to, and, and a, a trumpet, and they were going to surround the city. And guess what? They broke the clay pots and all at one time when Gideon said to break them, and then they blew the trumpet. And let me tell you, the enemies, like, they went fleeing. They were so afraid. 
They didn't even have to fight them. There was no bloodshed. There was nothing. They was just straight up afraid. That's the kind of that's the kind of battle I'm talking about. They was ready for war, but they thought they did a strategic type of warfare. They didn't have to do that physical stuff. So there are action movies in the Bible. There's also the Bible is full of supernatural experiences, things that you can never, you know, you may like think about, or you may even have seen in sci-fi movies and shows. It's even better stories than that in the Bible. I hope that I have intrigued your interest to go and look for your favorite genre. All you gotta do is do a quick Google search. Action stories in the Bible, they'll pop up. Love stories in the Bible, they'll pop up. And it'll give you something to read that, will, that interests you, uh, that may intrigue you, but it helps you to learn the Bible. It is not boring, and I've proved it to you today. If you want to know more about the different genres or how to find different stories in the Bible, come join us on Tuesday nights via Zoom. You know where to find us. You can email us at crew at faithwalkharvestctr.org, or you can message us below. We'll get back to you. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to stay uh, up to speed on any of our new videos coming out. Until next week, we love you, and God bless. Mm -hmm.